Okay, let's talk about the RNEE -E exam. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the math section of the uh, exam. And if you're watching this video, I assume you know what the RNEE -E exam, or you're likely probably preparing to take it. Um, so for those of you who just may not be aware, the RNEE -E exam, along with other exams out there like the TEAS or the HESI, and I think there's maybe a couple other R um, examinations that you take for entrance or acceptance into uh, nursing school. Okay, so it's kind of like the SAT or ACT uh, for college. You have to take um, your RNEE or other exams um, as part of your application into nursing school. Okay, so um, what they're going to be covering or what they're looking at is basically your your general math aptitude, right? Kind of like your high school level mathematics. You know how strong of a math aptitude you have, but they're not just looking at math; they're looking at other things, science and etc. Right? So it's kind of like your 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 entire educational you know skill set as you go into uh, nursing now, or to study to be a nurse. Now, uh, as a nurse, you're not going to be expected to be doing algebra and all those different things. I, at least I don't think so. I'm pretty sure you're not. But some of the things that you're definitely going to be um, using as a nurse is your knowledge of, like, say, percent. There are some a lot of things, conversion, um, fractions and decimals, all these type of things are for sure, um, you know, you're definitely going to uh, be employing as a nurse. But you're not going to necessarily be doing, you know, advanced algebra and geometry and these type of things. But that's not to deal with these exams right these exams are just hey what is your what's your current math strength so I, from my standpoint and my background is I'm a math teacher taught from sixth grade to college is you really want to have a really strong fundamental high school level you know, math background uh, to really feel confident for this exam okay so if you're trying to just you know like uh, do a quick review or you just don't want to you know um, you know, kind of do the work because you don't like math, and that's understandable as well. Then I think you're really doing yourself a disservice, not only for this exam, but you know, as your uh, a career in nursing. Um, I probably don't have to tell you this, but at least from what I'm uh, reading and researching, that nursing, getting to nursing school, is becoming more challenging. It's getting more competitive. And that's kind of crazy because the demand for nurses is just going to grow and grow with the amount of uh, baby boomers retiring, etc you know, our population growth, we're going to need more uh, nurses. So, but along with that, for whatever reason, it's becoming, at least from my um, assertion, or what I'm reading, it's becoming more competitive. So you don't want to leave anything to chance, especially math, okay? And again, you're not, you don't have to be studying advanced calculus and stuff for um, like the RNEE -E exam, but which I believe stands for Registered Nurse Entry Exam, but you want to have a good, strong, fundamental um, high school level math background. I think that is a good way of, of uh, um, thinking about it. All right, so I got a basic pr uh, practice problem here for you. Really, really basic, but it's um, the purpose of this problem here is to talk about a particular math skill set that you're going to want to really, really know. Um, not only for the RNE exam, but you're definitely just to be a nurse. So we'll get into that in a second. One thing, let me just mention, if you uh, kind of like watching this video and you kind of like the way I teach math, I offer a complete RNEE math test prep course. I'll leave the, the link to that course in the description of this video. Also, I literally have hundreds of math videos on my YouTube channel, so you can check those out. Um, but with that being said, let's get into this prom here. So really simple. How many feet is... Well, let's put in N, right? Let's kind of make the problem a little better. How many feet is in 72 inches? So why don't you take a moment there, see if you can figure that out. All right, so a lot of you probably already are saying, okay, this is pretty easy. I just take the inches and divide by 12, right? So if I say 24 inches, and this is the little little two little uh, kind of apostrophes, is the symbol for inches. So if I take that and I divide by 12, I get two feet, right? So I divide inches by 12, so 72, and divided by 12 is going to be what? Well, let me get my little calculator out here because I don't like to just kind of do long math, but 72 divided by 12 is going to be what? Six, right? I knew that, but it's always good to double check. So 72 inches 
when I divide it by cell, divide, divide it by 12 is 6. Okay, so pretty simple, really simple, right? So you're saying, well, this is, this problem is beneath me. This problem is way too easy. I mean, I'm looking to, you know, you know, be a little more challenged. So I got you, I got you here. So just hold on here for a second because the point I want to get into is conversion, all right? How you handle conversion. So what we're doing, really what we're looking at here is uh, units of measure and we're converting from one unit of measure to another okay in this case we're, we want to go from inches okay to feet so what we need is a conversion factor so more technically speaking this is the way we want to kind of approach or think about these problems so a conversion conversion factor and I guarantee you um, that you will see this as a nurse, various conversion factors, etc. So, what's a conversion factor? Well, basically, it's a fraction, okay? Um, and it looks something like this. In this particular problem, this would be an example of a conversion uh, factor. So, 12 inches, or, or let's do it this way one foot is 12 inches. Let me write it a little better. 12 inches. That's it, okay? It's a conversion factor. It is a, a you could you think of it as a uh, fraction, okay? Because that's exactly what it is. One foot is 12 inches, okay? One foot to 12 inches, to be a little bit more specific. This is a little fraction bar. One foot to 12 inches. Now, equivalently, I can think of it this way. 12 inches to one foot, okay? Both of these are equivalent. Now. You're saying, okay, well, all right, that's a conversion factor, so how do we uh, employ it? Now, any units of measure that you have, whether you're going to gallons to ounces or feet to miles or whatnot, you want to know the conversion factor, okay? So I'm going to show you very basically how we would employ this. So we want to go from 72 inches, so let's write this here, 72 inches, and I want to end up in feet, right? That's my answer. So I'm going to take the 72, 72 inches, and I want to multiply it by a conversion factor. So I'm going to multiply it by this conversion factor, right? So I know that one foot is equivalent to 12 inches, okay? Now 72 inches, I want to think of this as a fraction. So 72 inches over one, okay? So 72 inches divided by one is what? It's still 72 inches, but I wrote it this way to illustrate this as a fraction because this is exactly how we convert units of measure. Okay, so now when I multiply across, remember when you multiply fractions, you multiply this way. So it's going to be 72 inches times one foot, okay, over one times 12 inches, 12 inches. Okay, see what I did there? So 1 times 12 inches is the same thing as 12 inches. Now, where is this going? Where am I going with this? Well, what we want to do is when we're using a conversion factor is we want to have units of measure cross cancel. Now look here, I have inches in the numerator, I have inches in the denominator. So literally I can just cross cancel out these inches. One, th these units uh, are eliminated because I have the exact same unit in the numerator and denominator and I'm left with what? Just feet. So let's actually scoot this over here. Okay, so when I eliminate the inches I'm left with 72 times 1 foot, right? Over 12. Okay, see, the inches are eliminated, and this is what I'm left to left with. So I have 72 times 1 foot is, what, 72 feet, and uh, divided by 12, okay? And I keep working that down. 72 feet divided by 12 is, what, 72 divided by 12 is 6 feet. But the key is that my unit of measure is a, uh, a foot. Okay, that's, that's, that's what I wanted to know, right? It's feet. Because I'm like, okay, I want to go from inches to feet, so how do I do it? I need to eliminate inches. Now, this conversion factor, if I would have um, had the inches in the numerator and the, and the foot down in the denominator, I couldn't cross-cancel. I couldn't cross-cancel the inches, okay? But this basic problem 
is an illustration of how to use a conversion factor. This is critical, okay? Not only when you're dealing with the units of measure for distance or time, um, volume, you know, when you're talking about, you know, how much medication, you know, to that you're going to be giving, tra uh, believe me, you're going to be doing this. You got to know it. In chemistry, this is huge as well, okay? Uh, knowing how to work with units of measure. And this is just the, a real basic, basic foundational illustration of the concepts of how to eliminate units using a conversion factor so we can end up with the, uh, the unit of measure that we want, all right? So, if you understood this little problem, okay, I, I'm pretty certain that you got the answer right. That wasn't the point. But if you understood how to use a conversion factor, then that's excellent. All right. So, again, you know, if you're uh, looking for uh, a good program to prepare for the RNE um, exam, I think mine's pretty uh, excellent, extremely comprehensive, took me a lot of time uh, to prepare. Uh, so you're going to have an experienced teacher teaching you math. Um, and check out the link if you're interested. I'll, I'll, you can get the details for the rest of that. But hey, if you like my teaching style, I'm literally posting all the time a lot of different math videos that definitely, uh, definitely can benefit you. And if you enjoy the video, I would certainly appreciate a thumbs up and leave some feedback. Let me know how uh, your nursing aspirations are going. Are you taking the RNEE or maybe you're taking another exam? Maybe you're given a choice. I don't know. Um, I'm not a nurse, but I do know enough about the exams and what the uh, and the level of mathematics you're on there. But you know what? I try to read as much as many of the comments as I can on my videos so I learn, I get better, and I can pass this information on in future videos. But I do want to thank you whoever you are at the other, other end of this video for your aspirations to be a nurse. Um, you know, all of us are touched by healthcare professionals at some point in our life. And, you know, it's like that old adage, you know, it's like you don't think about these people until you, you need them and you're in some sort of crisis. So I only wish you all the best. Uh, I encourage you to, to study hard for these exams, you know, and, um, you know, don't let math, you know, stop you from, you know, attaining your dreams of becoming a nurse. All right. So with that being said, thank you for your time and have a great day.